Okay, well, it's noon mountain. Um, hello and welcome to everyone. My name is Justin Anthony and I'm one of the founders of Artwork Archive. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Katie Carey, who in addition to being responsible for the look and feel of Artwork Archive and all the wonderful content that you guys are familiar with, is an artist herself. Um, one other quick note before we get started is we're gonna try to get through this as swiftly as possible but there's a chance we may run a bit long. And for those of you who can't stay through the entire thing, or those that get disconnected, we will be posting a recording of this on our blog and social following this, probably Friday or Monday at the latest. So today's webinar is focused on strategies for running an art business during COVID-19. Um, and you know the main reason we're doing this is it's just so easy to feel helpless and defeated when you're locked up and inundated with this seemingly never ending stream of doomsday headlines. You know, there's so many things around us right now that we don't have control over. So our goal here is to take a break from that madness and, and talk about things we can control. So the other reason, you know, we wanted to provide some actionable steps that you can do right now to strengthen your art business. You know, we're understanding about the fact that galleries, shows, fairs, residencies around the world are shutting down in response to this. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, we wanted to share some things we're hearing from our own artists on how they're being affected. And then lastly, for you to use this as a go-to resource and reference for grants, articles, and other knowledge about COVID-19. And we're gonna cover that toward the end of this. So, what we're hearing, and I'm just going to go over this quickly, we've, you know, over the last few weeks received thousands of personal stories on how artists are specifically affected by this crisis, you know, and a lot of them looked like the very things you're seeing here. So once again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go through this quickly. Um, you know, the main takeaway from something like this is that we're all in this together and everyone's experiencing setbacks. And there's comfort in knowing that we are working together to get through this in challenging times. Um, so in addition to these, you know, stories we're hearing from artists about how the crisis is impacting their careers, we're also hearing a lot about how artists are adjusting to these challenging times. You know, given what we're seeing and hearing, I'm, I'm actually filled with a great deal of optimism here and believe that this period, you know, despite all its challenges, is going to lead to some unprecedented creativity and innovation. You know, and additionally, I wanna point out that all of you are playing an absolutely critical role in the healing process. You are the ones creating things that inspire people, that give hope, and that provide comfort in a time when it's most needed. So obviously, thank you for that. So let's jump into some things you can do to strengthen your business during, these period, during this period. Um, I would be remiss given that Artwork Archive does focus on inventory at its core um, to not focus on the organizing aspect of your business. So this is sort of the rainy day people have always talked about, though I'm not sure anybody could have imagined it lasting this long. But the point is likely that you have some newly found downtime and this is yet another way to take full advantage of it. So this is the time where you can catch up on tasks you've been putting off and focus on things like documenting your artworks, contacts and other critical information, tracking past exhibitions, logging your income, your expenses and getting your financial house in order. Um, building contact lists and creating lists of existing contacts and then organizing things like documents that are critical to your career. And what you're going to see kind of consistently throughout this presentation is in addition to some of the bullet points, we also have links. We will make this presentation downloadable at the end of this so you guys can click into this and get more specific information as we cover these various topics. But the main point of this thing, or this particular slide is, this is really a good time to get organized so that you're emerging from this stronger than and more organized than when you went into it. So the next slide I wanna get into is this idea of refining your personal narrative. Um, this information 
is as much for telling your own story to potential buyers as it is for preparing you for applying for grants, exhibitions, et cetera. And, you know, speaking as a collector, these are things I really pay attention to as I like to feel a connection and or understanding with the artist. In some cases, purchases I've made are as much about the artist as the art itself. Um, another point and reason why this is important is you're going to be asked for these items when applying for a lot of the grants that are available or applications that you're putting out there. So use this time to update them so you can keep them handy. Some of the outline things to focus on, the bio, statement, your CV, your resume, um, and you know whether you're organizing this in Google Docs or whatever tool you use, um, having it in a place where you can easily put hands on and access it for when you need it is critical. For those of you using Artwork Archive, you can use the My Docs tool for this. Once again, we've got some direct links here that talk more specifically about how to enhance these various aspects here as you're getting that information in order. And Katie, I think this one uh, is for you on the, the newsletter side of things. Yeah, so hi everyone. Um, I am in charge of sending out our regular newsletters at Artwork Archive. So not only do I believe in the newsletters as communication and you know have, making those connections between all of you, but just because now during this crisis you can't interact in person, it doesn't mean that your communication needs to stop. If you are able to, um, marketing is purely just connecting with people that are interested or talking with them. And right now we're all looking for connections and genuine, genuine connections at this time. Um, art is a great way to do that. Um, so what you can do now is you can send letters or and newsletters to the people that you might know. Um, that can be in your artist community, it can be clients that you've already had, and let them know what you're up to um, in a genuine way. Let them know what you're working on, what you're struggling with, what you have available. People are looking to make those connections and support you during this time. So you don't have to stop communicating. It's a great time to open up that dialogue and make those connections. Um, so we added, again, you can see, it doesn't have to be, we added some tools here. Uh, we use MailChimp. You can use also Campaign Monitor. Both have free plans and then available for a premium plan. Um, but you can also just send uh, email or you can send letters or give a call, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, but it is a time that you, you don't have to scale it back. Yeah, and one, one thing I want to add to that is some of the most compelling and interesting newsletters I'm seeing aren't coming from any official tool their personal emails to, you know, that particular artist body of collectors, just to help keep me up to date on what they're up to, new work they may have created, or other things that I may be interested in. And I'm really liking that personal touch as a way to gain insights into what's going on with them and see anything new that I may be interested in purchasing during this time. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a sales pitch. It can be, you can show what you're up to and people are interested in looking at that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, in addition to that, um, at some point, this will end. And the whole point of this is to take the time to make sure we're coming out of this stronger than when we went into it. We don't often get the chance or the time to work on planning for the future, especially when we have those immediate deadlines taking priority. We're working to hit those deadlines and we can't really strategize for the future. Um, so once we have this foundation in order, one of the things we have seen the most successful artists employ is taking the time to think strategically instead of being reactionary. So in order to plan for the future, um, we can use this moment to stop and evaluate. Um, when they're slowed down, we can look at the big picture um, and we can get some insights into what should we do, be doing, what's working for us, what's not, is there work that is selling, um, is there work that we could increase the price of? Could we make more of a smaller work? What can we do to help our business during this time? Um, and we can also schedule, I know we can't schedule things right now, but we can start looking at maybe a few months out. What can we schedule? What can we start thinking about and planning for? It doesn't have to be a complete downtime. I mean, definitely take the time to take care of yourself and do your immediate needs, but start also scheduling for the future. Um, and those, that goes into goal setting. Um, I know that 
This has been a little bit of a disruptive year already for goals that we might have made for the year, but we can look at those and adjust um, how we can prioritize and make new goals for the year. Uh, they might look a little different than if you set a New Year's goal, but uh, we can still set and prioritize those. And we can continue working on work if you're able to, or maybe that means you have different materials and build up your inventory for when this all does end. All right. So laying a foundation online. Now we're going to jump over to what a lot of you guys are facing and where we got a lot of questions is, you know, as these galleries have disappeared, art fairs have stopped. Um, so many people are moving online and looking for creative strategies for how to do that effectively. So you just, you know, you just spent time, we, we covered in the previous slide, this idea of refining the bio and statement. Um, make sure that's reflected on your website. Your website is now the main way people will interact with you for the foreseeable future. And it's important when we emerge from this that this will be beneficial for you as well. You know, social, social distancing has all but eliminated any direct face-to-face -face sales or interactions, and it'll be some time before any of that changes. So when you're talking about this, focus on telling your story. And that's taking that work you just did when you're going through updating these things and making sure it's reflected on the website. This also translates to how you're presenting your work. So make sure you're, you're presenting your artwork in the best light possible. And this is in essence your gallery now. So make sure you have up-to-date photos for those you know, works of art that you still have access to. Um, make sure you're getting recent work up on the site. Uh, and then additionally, and I, this is such a longer topic. This is why we put a link here. Optimize for SEO. This is a really good time to audit your own personal website and tune it up to make sure that it is optimized to the maximum for driving traffic to your site because more and more people are moving online and there's more competition than ever for eyeballs. So this little article here that this links to will give you some more advice on that. You know, our assumption is most of you already have websites already. For those of you that don't, here are some recommendations on some potential outlets for um, websites. The bottom line is there are thousands of options for this. Pick one that you feel best represents your artwork and has kind of the lowest technological and cost barrier because this can be one of those things that becomes a really difficult decision and leads to kind of analysis paralysis. When it comes to selling work online, um, we're gonna be covering some of this more specifically in some of the upcoming blog posts, but I did wanna mention that it, it can be absolutely overwhelming the number of choices and outlets you have out there. So for those of you who are already selling online, focus on what's working. For those of you who haven't yet, when you're doing your experiments, try to set them up such that you can establish which sites are producing or which strategies are producing the most for you and double down on those. You do not need to be everywhere. Um, I would avoid also any online galleries or other outlets that are just over promising or overcharging for their services. If it looks too good to be true or people are, are making promises that your art will be showcased over others and yet there's millions of artists on their site, chances are they're gonna have a difficult time delivering on that or it's gonna be extremely costly. Um, for those of you that are using Artwork Archive, we encourage you to use the many features that exist to help get your work out and in front of people. And, you know, there, we have more on that on our website. Uh, let's see. Pricing for online sales. Katie, you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. Um, we understand that not everyone right now will be in the position to necessarily buy art during this time. And that's just the reality of the economic situation. However, there are still people that want to support artists and do have the means. Um, people understand what they support right now will be the world that we return to. Um, if we support independent artists, we'll have a world with art. And if we purchase things just from Amazon, the world will look a little different. Um, so there are people uh, that want to support you and want to buy art. Um, we also understand that you've worked hard to establish these price points for your core work and you shouldn't change those prices. Um, you don't have to come down in your price just because it's a difficult time, but 
If you are looking for different ways to add to a revenue stream, um, what we are hearing artists saying is that um, they're going to be working, at, make, working on that same big work, um, but then working on new work that isn't maybe in a lower price point. Maybe it's smaller work or it's different material or it's something outside of the norm of what they usually create. It's more easily sold online. Um, so you can create something with more of an accessible price point, smaller works, prints, cards, something limited edition of. And then you can also, the, another pro to that is that you can ship it easier. So that's an important consideration right now. Um, you probably can't create work or sell or ship very large work. Um, so yeah, the bottom line here is that art is still essential. You can still keep selling it. People will continue to buy art and it will be better for our society um, that you do and that people continue to buy it. Um, we wanna support each other, our communities, our culture and keep this going throughout. Um, here are just a few, if you're looking for prints, we added the, a few different print options here. Um, so and and, and one, one thing on the print side, and I already promised Katie in advance that I will not go off on a rant about <laughs> my concern that this will turn into the commoditization of art. But I, I do want to point out, I, I've had a, a, just a ton of conversations um, this week in particular with artists specifically on how they're transitioning, how they're adjusting. Um, a lot of them aren't modifying their core work, but as Katie mentioned, they're exploring other avenues with accessibility as the theme. So that's accessibility from a, how they're displaying it on the web, making it easy for them to buy, smaller form factor works that makes it easier to ship, and just trying to come up with strategies or even experimenting with some new mediums that are more accessible and do speak more to people that may be in a position where there's now less disposable income. Um, the other thing I would say is if you, and this is just a personal opinion, this does not represent the views of Artwork Archive. Um, my personal opinion and, and just something I wanted to relate as from the collector perspective is I've had some personal notes from artists that I've purchased from in the past that were framed not so much in the, hey, we're doing this COVID sale, but more from the standpoint as, hey, here's some works from the past that I thought you might be interested in. They personalized it for me because they were older works, they were able to sell them for a lower price point. And I'm looking at it through the lenses of not, hey, this is diminishing their work or that I should assume that their work in the future is gonna be at a lower price point, but this is a unique opportunity for me to potentially acquire more of their work at a more accessible price point. So just something to keep in mind as a, as a strategy. Yep. And yeah, so when you're, when you're trying to display that, of course, you will want to have your online portfolio up to date and have all of those works, whether they're those older works or newer works or the new line, you want to have them available online in a portfolio so that people can look through them and have a, have a good viewing experience of that and easily purchase them. So we just included some resources here. You can check back on the downloadable form and kind of click through those and research if you don't already have one. You can go to the next one. All right. So then, yeah, social media is a big part of this. Um, everyone's on social media. And we also, I mean, I will say that it's been extremely heartening in the last few weeks to see the artist community come together on social media to support each other, to offer their works, to show what they're up to, to inspire people and share calming or comforting images, make us laugh, things like that. So it's really been creating this new, a stronger online community. Um, and so we're seeing that a lot. Um, artists like Lisa McShane, uh, she shared with us when this was happening that she's doing her part um, to make this less stressful by sharing her art. And you know, that's a great thing that all artists can be doing right now. Uh, there are specific hashtags that you can be using, specific challenges. We ourselves started a challenge a uh, 30 day challenge that you can find on our blog um, about different art prompts to get you through the day, stay creative. If you have a family, we have different prompts for families and just how to stay creative and, and connected to your community throughout this because we might be in all of our different houses, but these challenges in social media, they help connect us through creativity. So other things that you could do during this time to kind of bring people into what you're doing. You can't have a open house, you can't have a studio tour, but you can give virtual studio tours and 
maybe open up your audience to people that might even not be able to be at one physically. So you can show your process, show your space, show how you're adapting to maybe a studio in your house. Um, and all of that gives people uh, inside look to your personality and who you are as an artist and connect even further to your work. Um, of course, um, before you kind of do any big movements on this, you probably want to do a social media audit if you haven't in a while. Make sure that your bio, your links, um, all your social media information is up to date. They have a way to then buy your work. So make sure to include a link to your online portfolio, anything special. Um, a link to your newsletter, have them create these, give them an opportunity to make it a long-term relationship instead of just stopping by for a minute and checking out what you're doing. Um, the other thing that's kind of exciting about right now is that we have time to focus on creating new content. So if you've been doing the same thing, um, if you post an image of your work um, and then wait for comments, that's great. Um, but it also might be a fun time to experiment with new formats. Uh, if you haven't used video, uh, time lapse, things like that, uh, show your process, get behind the scenes, experiment with different ways of creating content and engaging your audience. Um, and then we create, we put some further reading down here for, this will include like how to grow your audience, uh, what platform is best for you. You don't have to be on everything, um, but find something that works for you that you actually enjoy using and that you will use an update. And um, so yeah, you can get this guide to, if you wanna do a deeper dive into how to grow your social media accounts. And here are just some additional tools. We use these for scheduling. So once you kind of figure out what you wanna do, you can use these for scheduling if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, most of them are free and you can kind of build out. You can use one day a week, you can block that schedule. So you can use maybe a day earlier in the week and figure out what you want to be posting for the rest of the week and then spend the rest of the week not focusing on social media and not getting into that time suck of the scroll but actually spending time in your studio and this will post for you automatically. Next. All right, so yeah, so what we've seen and um, we saw that earlier that statistic from Americans for the Arts that about 85% of arts organizations have canceled teaching and workshops. Um, so we've seen a lot of people from conferences and things like that. Artists are, of course, getting innovative and creative. Um, and a lot of workshops are going online. So you might, if you have a workshop, you probably want to adapt it to an online space. If you've never done it, it also might be a good time to try your hand at it. Um, there's a lot of people looking for things to do right now um, and ways to keep entertained. So you can also offer up, in addition to artwork sales, a spot in a, in a workshop. Um, it can be for artists or beginning artists or people who've never done it. it depends on what you want to cater to. Um, so in order to adapt your class to an online format, some pretty basic things, but things to keep in mind are that you want to use materials that most people might have at their home or you would want to have your workshop be for a more advanced artist who you would assume has oils and all the right paints and all the right thinners at home. Um, you also want to make sure that you can, this is a pet peeve of mine, going to classes, online classes, you want to see their hands. So you want to, you can have a far away one, but you also want to get close enough to what your hands are doing so that people can really see your technique and the details of how you're creating what you're creating. Um, and then you can, you don't have to offer these classes for free. You can make money from these classes. Um, so offer them through your website, through a formal checkout system, put it on there just like you would a product and have people check out. If you don't have that set up already. Uh, you can also use something more informal. People are okay with that right now. Um, you can use a Google chat, accept Venmo, accept PayPal, things like that. I mean, we're um, seeing people do private lessons, taking their previous you know, class they might have done at a local arts organization online. Some are free, some are paid, some are using this as a way you know, to have supplemental income. Um, it's, it's totally up to you. Uh, I, I would encourage all of you to kind of seek out and identify those artists you feel are doing this more successfully and, you know, really try to emulate that because there is a lot out there. 
Um, we initially thought that there was just going to be a kind of finite amount of audience for this. Um, but we are finding that now more than ever, there's kind of an insatiable appetite for tools, learning and other resources online. So it is certainly not too late to get involved in this, especially for those of you that already had a following in person. Yeah, that's a great point. So these are just some tools that you can use for teaching online. Uh, we're using Zoom right now. Um, but you can go through later again on when you download the slides and see which one might be best suited for you. And here's some further reading about how to host it. it goes kind of into the how to. So if you've never done it before, these here are some tutorials that you can go back and look through. Say you want to host on Vimeo or do a watch party or Facebook Live. Uh, here are all information on how to actually go through and do that. So one of, one of the interesting things that we're also seeing during this time is that artists are successfully launching these new initiatives uh, such as exclusive content and that can look different to everyone. So uh, what some artists are doing this during this time are creating an exclusive line of work. So it's maybe something a little outside of what they usually create. It's different color, different format, different style, different size, um, and it's only going to be created right now. So you can kind of offer that up to your audience or your clients or collectors right now. And it's, and it's a great marker of this time as well and recording what's happening during this time. So you can offer that, you can offer these subscription memberships. So um, you can use something like Patreon, which we linked at the bottom of this slide. Um, and you can offer for maybe a little bit lower of your retail price, but a subscription based, uh, your, your, your clients and patrons can then support you on an ongoing basis during this time. They can maybe pay X amount of dollars per month to get something in the mail or something digitally. Um, so there, that's another way of offering like this exclusive beyond what you might see normally. Um, you can offer gift cards. A lot of restaurants we're seeing doing this. So this is a good way you can offer give a gift card to a friend that you think might really like it. So if you don't have a gift card option on your website already, um, that's a good, easy way to have someone support you now. And then if even if you're overwhelmed or in crisis now, they can fulfill that gift card later. Um, you can do a second sale or a flash sale on social. And um, so if you have some stuff laying around that maybe wasn't quite up to your expectations, um, this is a good time to offer those if you don't want to do a discount, but you can kind of keep in mind if this is the right thing for your business or not. Um, you can do, this is a good time to do a commission. People pay you up front now. You can fulfill that order later. Um, if you don't have a dedicated landing page, it's something you could do. Um, just offering specific things you're working on now, uh, specific lines that you're working on, um, and making it really unique to this time. And, and then again, Patreon is linked at the bottom here. Okay, and online events, they don't have to be just workshops or classes. Um, you can create a Facebook Live events to connect with your audience or do a studio tour and show what you're working on and create those connections. Um, marketing doesn't have to just be about selling, it's about connecting, again, with, your, with the people that are interested. So giving them that inside look, creating events, uh, showing people what you're up to, it's, it's all ways to create an audience and a connection with your audience. I think Instagram live is, you know, some of those live events that I've seen, even with short blurbs on the creation process for a particular work have been super engaging. Mm -hmm. Okay. So jumping into probably the hottest topic of this webinar, you know, when we're, when we ask you all for questions in advance, the most common topic by far was the topic of grants and other financial assistance. And this also happens to be one of the most challenging topics. And so rather than try to cover every angle of this topic on this webinar, we're gonna offer up a couple of general recommendations and then provide a link at the end um, to our post 
that has much more detailed information as well as links to the various programs that are out there. And an important note here is we're gonna to continue to update our main blog post on this that you can find at artworkarchive.com forward slash blog as the new opportunities arise. Um, so the first recommendation that, that I would have would be to search locally. Um, this is not going to be the case everywhere, but many of you live in areas where local arts organizations and even some cities and states have stepped up to provide, gra to provide grants to creatives in their communities. Um, as an example, an organization I'm involved with here in Denver has allocated $200,000 for grants to local creatives and creative businesses. Um, so the advantage to these local opportunities in most cases is they are easier to apply for, quicker to fund because the money's already allocated and you don't have to jump through quite the same amount of hoops as you would with some of the more national programs. The next recommendation I would have would be to consult any member organizations you're a part of. Um, you know, there's a lot of art member organizations out there that many of you are members of and they can be a great source of additional information and are there to support you. Um, lastly, and this is really critical because I have just heard story after story about this, keep in mind that there is a finite amount of money for a number of these programs. So we encourage you to identify and prioritize the opportunities you're looking at and get a jump on the application process. Um, this, is, this is really critical. Um, e even today with, in Congress, there is a discussion on extending the PPP program that many of you um, are, are likely looking into and is covered on this, this next slide a little bit in extending the money allocated to that because it is already rumored to be oversubscribed. So, you know, this is one of the most largely funded programs in the country and even that is suffering from some funding source issues. So to summarize on that, identify, prioritize, and get a jump on the application process for those. Um, this quick slide right here just goes through some of the information that's available that our partner SURF has supplied us with. Um, and what you're going to see on, on the blog that will be referenced in the downloadable version of this, um, we're not posting subjective things. We're posting objective things from vetted sources to make sure that you can help filter through the chaff and a lot of the misinformation that's out there. And that's our goal. Um, as these things are evolving so quickly, we're doing our best to stay on top of that to make sure you're getting the most up-to-date information. Here's some other links that are part of this presentation that you'll be able to refer to, um, you know, that just have a wide variety of information on relief and some other region-based um, relief links. And I do want to mention if this is um, an area that you're interested in learning more about, we will be doing another webinar with SURF uh, in the coming weeks that we will provide you with information, the sign up link um, that will go into further detail about each of these uh, grants and relief funds and how to actually and the details for each of those. So this is an overview, but if you're interested in more detail. Go to that that will be a dedicated specific webinar on that topic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one other note on this is when you're applying for this, here's some just quick notes and best practices. Um, this is coming from NIFA that will help you prepare for these things. Um, you know, reading the guidelines, making sure you understand them, thorough documentation, the better prepared you are, the better, you know, foot you're going to put forward here. Um, proof of canceled contracts and commitments. You know, I had someone today telling me about their PPP application process where their bank actually required them to provide them with a full financial statement. Um, I have not heard this be the case in all situations, but it just goes to show that, you know, making sure you've got the information at hand is going to help you in this application process. Um, and last things, particularly as it pertains to grants, residencies, and things involving art institutions, Show you're a professional. Make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. Make sure that you're presenting yourself professionally um, and, and, and taking the time to not rush through this, but to really thoughtfully apply. Um, questions, you see this has a blank. 
uh, we dramatically underestimated the number of questions we were going to get. And in the interest of avoiding having you sit through another few hours of me droning on, we're going to be addressing the most frequently asked questions in an upcoming blog post and in upcoming blog posts that we'll be rolling out over the next few weeks. Um, basically what we're doing is we're consolidating the thousands of questions into themes, taking the most asked about themes, and we'll be doing posts dedicated to those. So stay tuned for those in the future. Um, I, I really want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, and I want to thank you again for doing what you do. You know, art continues to be a source of hope, inspiration, and comfort for so many of us, and we appreciate it. For those of you interested in learning more about our tools for artists, please check out artworkarchive.com. There's also a link to our blog, which will continue to update and provide up-to-date information on opportunities and other critical advice that can help you navigate these tough times. And finally, if you have any questions or want to reach out to us for any other reason, you can reach out to us at info at artworkarchive.com. So stay healthy. Thanks again. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Al. And I just want to mention again that they will, these slides will be downloadable. So we will send those. We got a few questions while this was going on, if that was possible. So we will send that and you can have all the further reading and links available. All right, thanks. Thank you again.